Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Welcome to Inspired by the Quran series. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran, O the mankind, what is deceiving you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us, al-insan, the mankind, that what is keeping us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is not allowing us to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the obstacle that we can't get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Gharra ya ghurru ghurur is deception. What is deceiving us about Allah subhanahu and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the Quran in a different verse by saying that the life of this world is nothing but a deception. So you and I were living in this life and therefore it might be a deception that there's so many deceptions we may be facing in our day-to-day -day life. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you and me by saying, Al-insan, the mankind, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. What is deceiving you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the most generous? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking a question. It is reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this verse, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, gharruhu jahluhu. So the question is, what is deceiving you and me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, gharruhu jahluhu, that man's deception is his ignorance. What deceives us is our ignorance. And naturally in life, when you don't have knowledge and when you don't have information, you and I will not be able to make the informed decision. So the information and the knowledge helps you to make informed decision. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying gharruhu jahluhu that man's deception is his ignorance. Now in life we may be deceived by many things and different people may be deceived by different things. So therefore you and I we, we have to find out what is deceiving me. I have to find out my own deceptions in life that what is deceiving me, what is keeping me away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to find out what is keeping you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the obstacle? Why can we not get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So therefore different people may be kept far away, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with different things, with different deceptions. It could be the family, it could be the job, it could be the career, it could be the wealth, it could be the poverty, it could be the education, it could be arrogance, it, it could be ignorance. So these are different things which can deceive you and me and can keep us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one can say, perhaps, the highest of all deceptions and the mother of all deceptions as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says gharruhu jahluhu that man's deception is his ignorance so therefore if we remain ignorant in our life then that will be a deception that will not help us to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the less we will know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the distant we will remain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more we will know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the closer we can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so, th so therefore if the obstacle between me and Allah between you and Allah is al-jahl is the ignorance then we have to remove that obstacle we have to remove that barrier because that is not allowing us to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we want to remove ignorance from our way there's no other services which can remove jahl the only thing which can remove jahl ignorance from our way it is al-ilm the knowledge because only knowledge can remove jahl ignorance 
from the way, which is blocking the way, which is not allowing you and me get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, the only way we can remove the ghurur, the deception, and the deception is al-jahl, ignorance. The only way we can remove al-ghurur, the deception, al-jahl, the ignorance, is through al-ilm, the knowledge. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, al-ilmu bi ta'allumi, that you and I we gain knowledge through learning, through a ta'allum. So if we want to gain knowledge so that we can remove ignorance and we can get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to gain knowledge. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that you and I we can acquire knowledge through learning al-ilmu bi ta'allum. And a ta'allum or learning is a process which requires you and me to be able to sit down, you and me able to plan out, you and me able to concentrate and think and reflect and then gain knowledge. Because knowledge just cannot be gained randomly. If we try to gain knowledge randomly through attending random classes, we will gain some information, some knowledge. It is like we are piling brick bricks, but we will never be able to build a house. But when you try to gain knowledge in a structured manner, in a consistent manner, then not only you are compiling bricks, but you will be able to build the house of, of Islam and you'll be able to build the house of ilm knowledge and that will help you and me to know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore it is very important that whatever knowledge we are seeking, whether the knowledge of Tajweed, Quran recitation, where or the knowledge of Arabic, the Arabic language, so that we can understand the Quran better, or Islamic sciences and Sharia uh, sciences, that we should try to learn those different sciences in a structured manner and in a consistent manner, so that we can actually understand better and we can actually gain more comprehensive knowledge, and that will help us to know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and get close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the following verses that الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ It is Allah who has created you and me. And then Allah fashioned you and me in, in, a, in a perfect manner. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Allah gave us due proportion. Now, we have taken our life for granted because we were born like this and we find, found ourselves like this. But Allah is saying, الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ It is Allah who has created us in a balanced manner, in a proportionate manner. Can you imagine if both eyes were one, were on one side, if both shoulders were on one side, if both hands were on one side, if both legs were on one side, our life would have become difficult. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also created us in a proportionate and in a balanced manner. So the eyes are on the same level, the shoulders are on the same level, the hands are on the same level, the legs are on the same level. Imagine having eyes, one eye above and the other below. Imagine having one, hand, one shoulder above and the other below. Imagine having one hand long and one hand short. Imagine having one leg short and one leg long. Life will be very difficult. Because we found ourselves from the birth, we have taken everything for granted. It is Allah who has created you and me like that. So we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Fi ayi suratim ma sha arakabak. In whatever surah, in whatever form, in whatever shape Allah wanted to create you and me. We should be grateful and thankful to Allah for giving us such beautiful functioning body which allows us to go about in our day-to-day -day life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then talks about the people who deny the day of judgment. That some of us we deny the day of judgment, the day of recompense. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ That Allah has appointed over us لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ Honorable, respectable angels, scribes, 
who are being appointed over us so that they can scribe whatever you and I do. يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفَعَلُونَ They know what we do. It is not that difficult to understand nowadays because people through the help of technology they can see everything can be recorded. So the angels are there to record every single deed you and I do in this life and that will be presented to us on the day of judgment, on the day of recompense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جَحِيمٍ Surely Al-Abrar, the pious people they will be in Naim in Jannah. Wa inna al fujjar la fi jahim and the fujjar the evil people. They will be in jahim in hellfire. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Yaslaw naha yawm al din." They will enter the Jahannam on the day of judgment. Wa ma hum anha bi ghaibin. And none of them will be left out. There will be no absentees. So anyone. Denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anyone denying the day of judgment, the, the accountability and the responsibility will not be able to get away. Nobody will be absent. Everyone will be part of the accountability and will be brought forward on the day of judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَدْرَى كَمَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ What will make you understand, what will make you realize, what is the day of judgment? ثُمَّ مَا أَدْرَى كَمَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ And again Allah says, what will make you understand, what will, what will make you realize about the day of judgment? And this is the Quranic style that Allah asks a question and then He repeats the question and He asks, asks you know, what will make us realize, what will make us understand? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لِلَّهِ On that day, nobody will have any power. يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا You and I will have no power on the day of judgment. وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لِلَّهِ and the matter is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Now, if we look at some of these verses, and if we look at the, the, the first verse I recited, Allah said, Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. Oh, the mankind, what is deceiving you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Keeping you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not allowing you to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I mentioned that it is the jahal, it is the ignorance. So, therefore, if we remain in jahal, in ignorance, then we become jahil, ignorance. And those who are jahil, they become fujjar, evil. And when you become fujjar, the destination is jahim, the hellfire. On the contrary, when you and I, when we try to gain ilim, knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about our existence, about our duties and responsibilities. So when you try to gain knowledge, we become knowledgeable people, we become alim, we become learned. Yes, it varies. Some people will be highly knowledgeable and, and others like us will be less knowledgeable. But if we gain knowledge, then we are more informed. And when you gain knowledge, then you become part of abrar, the pious people. And when we become abrar, pious people, then the destination is Naim, Jannah. So Jahal leads to Jahil, which leads to Fujjar, and that leads to Jahim, Hellfire. Ilim leads to Alim, and that leads to Abrar, and that leads to the final destination, al Naim, the Paradise. It is very important that we try our best to remove ignorance from our life and we gain knowledge so that we can make informed decisions and choices. And therefore we will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and we will not be deceived about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created us and to him is our return. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gives us the opportunity to gain comprehensive knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can worship him and we can become successful in both worlds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.